Hey, it's Noel of the Actors Feedback Forum. Recently, I was asked a question that I haven't considered in earnest in all these years that I've been doing this, performing professionally. What is acting? I was asked for my definition of acting. And I, I didn't have an answer. I realized I hadn't ever really thought about it from my own perspective. I have been content with the very intelligent definitions given by so many instructors and, and actors over the years that have summed it up in many ways. Every single one of them is meaningful. But I never actually decided to define it personally for myself until this recent question. So it got me thinking about it. What is my personal definition of acting? I had to think about it. But I did have an epiphany. Before that, I looked up some of the answers that have been given over the years by various people, and I want to share some of those with you now. An art in which an actor uses imagination, intelligence, psychology, memory, vocal technique, facial expressions, body language, and an overall knowledge of the filmmaking process to realize, under the director's guidance, the character created by the screenwriter. I liked this because it summed it up very neatly and it, it brought a lot of things into the mix here. It talked about overall knowledge of the filmmaking process, which doesn't get talked about very often, but it is critical to an actor. They talked about the director's guidance, which isn't often mentioned in a definition of acting, but I felt that was important too. So I liked this definition as a very thorough definition, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit much, too many words. So I, I kept looking. I came upon the famous Lee Strasberg, perhaps one of the most influential acting teachers in the United States and commonly referred to as the father of method acting. Strasberg became fascinated by the teachings of Stanislavski, the Russian who led the Moscow theater, and took many of those ideas and created an acting school of thought here in the United States in the 1930s which exists to this day at the Lee Strasberg Institute located in Los Angeles. He goes on to say, acting is generally agreed to be a matter less of mimicry, exhibitionism, or imitation than of ability to react to imaginary stimuli. Its essential elements remain the twin requisites enunciated in the 18th century by French actor Francois-Joseph Talma, unusual sensitivity and extraordinary intelligence. I'd like to think I'm extraordinarily intelligent, <laughs> but I think the intelligence they're referring to, as mentioned here, is the, the ability to understand the human condition. I continued looking and I found another one of Strasberg's contemporaries and fellow creator of the group theater, Sanford Meisner, who said that acting is behaving truthfully under imaginary circumstances. I like that definition a lot. It's one of my favorites because it's simple. It's short and sweet, and it really sums it up. As an actor, we are expected to react authentically and believably, both for ourselves and for our viewing audience, in a set of sometimes wildly unbelievable circumstances. And we have to believe it, and we have to make it believable to our audience so that they are able to suspend their disbelief and invest themselves into the role that we're presenting to them. Another contemporary of the two aforementioned gentlemen, Stella Adler, who is famous for having trained Marlon Brando, a well-known method actor, is that acting is in everything but the words. And I love this quote a lot also, again, because it's short and sweet, but it really sums up a lot about the process. It's that in my opinion, and I think many actors will agree with me, 90% of acting is nonverbal. It's never about the words, which seems counterintuitive because you often hear about actors struggling to memorize all their lines. But in truth, it's not about the words. It's not about the dialogue. It's about the feelings and the emotions, both being felt and elicited by the actor in the process of telling the story. There's so much more going on than just the verbal. Her student, the famous Marlon Brando, famously said, to grasp the full significance of life is the actor's duty, to interpret it is his problem, and to express it is dedication. I like that one too, especially coming from such a great actor. 
Whether you loved Marlon or, or didn't, you could not deny his incredible talent. Uta Hagen perhaps famously defined what bad acting is rather than good acting. She said, if you can see what an actor has prearranged, it's bad acting. She went on to say, when I go to the theater, if I can see the acting, I already don't like it. And I've said this myself many times. If they can see you acting, you're not. <laughs> Our, the whole purpose of an actor is to look like we're not acting. It's sort of uh, contradictory. But Uda summed that up very succinctly. Uda is also one of the uh, biggest influences on my favorite instructor, Howard Fine. And in her book, Challenge for the Actor, she says, Talent is defined in the dictionary as the natural endowment of a person with special or creative aptitudes. In an actor, I believe, these endowments consist of high sensitivity and responsiveness to sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell, of exceptional sensitivity to others, of being easily moved by beauty and pain, and of having a soaring imagination without losing control of reality. So that's a lot like unusual sensitivity and extraordinary intelligence. So some agreement between her and Lee Strasberg, even though they disagreed on many other things. One of my favorite teachers, Howard Fine, talks about acting from the viewpoint of the why. He says, the why versus the how. In life, we have thoughts and feelings. And then we find those words to express those feelings. The motivation is automatically first and automatically preceding speech. We use words as tools to get what we want. Howard is a big proponent of the why. To continue on, Ivana Chubbuck, another very well-known instructor, says that acting requires faith. You just have to believe that you are the person you're playing and that what is happening is happening to you. Meryl Streep famously said, acting is not about being someone different. It's finding the similarity in what is apparently different than finding myself in there. Jake Gyllenhaal said, the only way I can move past the absurdity of what I do is to commit to the point of absurdity. I love the play on words, and it also says a lot about what we do in that it's very much, you know, an imagined circumstance. We're involved in unreal situations that we have to try to make real, both for ourselves in order to fully embody that character and portray those emotions authentically, and for our viewing audience who we are asking to suspend their disbelief and come along with us on this journey. And since we're talking about absurdity, George Burns, one of my all-time favorite superstar comedians, said memorably, acting is all about honesty. If you can fake that, you've got it made. And that's funny, but it's also very true. Because in truth, we are somewhat faking it on many levels in that we're portraying someone we're not in a situation we're not really in, and we've got to make it honest. <laughs> Which brings us to one of the main reasons for this video. Again, back to Sanford Meisner, who said, why is the most important word in an actor's vocabulary? And I would go further to say, it's the most important word to an actor, whether you're talking about their vocabulary or their process, it's just the most important word. And it is my one word answer to what is acting. From now on, if anyone asks me, how do I define acting? I'm just going to say, why? Because when you boil it down, the very essence of everything we do as actors is powered by the question, why? Why do I feel this way? Why am I burning to say the things that I'm about to say? Why do I want to affect my scene partner in the way that I'm trying to affect them? Why do I want to overcome the obstacle or obstacles I face? Why, why, why? If we power everything we do and everything we say in a scene with the question of why, and we are attempting to answer that question both for ourselves and for our viewers, we will succeed. Even though there may be a million ways to answer the question, as long as we are answering it authentically, we can never be wrong, which is very empowering when you think about it, which is another reason why I think why is such a great word as a definition for acting. Our job is to answer why. In every scene, there's conflict. 
and in every scene there's a character trying to overcome the obstacles of those conflicts whatever his obstacles may be situations circumstances lack of money lack of lack of skills lack of opportunity whatever the obstacles are that character needs to overcome them that's part of his journey part of his arc in the story or hers and there's a why powering all of that i think that it's an important word for every actor to focus on at all points in their process whether it's now in the script breakdown and analysis portion of your preparation or whether you're actually in the process of the scene you've actually gotten to the test phase and now you're recording videos of yourself practicing the lines and working on the scene why has to be there again has to be there from the beginning has to be there all throughout even once you're on set or on stage and you're actually performing the scene for realsies and they're filming you why always why you have to keep coming back and revisiting it because what what if you're in the scene and your scene partner throws a curveball at you and ad libs a line or flubs a line or forgets a line how are you ever going to power through that unless you know the route just like in real life we would find a way to recoup and and power through the situation you have to do the same thing in the scene you have to stay in it you have to remember your why and you have to react and in many cases and we've seen this happen in famous movies and stage productions those flubs can turn out to be the most authentic and and most memorable part of the scene and if they happen during filming oftentimes they end up in the final cut and they end up in the movie because they're just so magical sometimes it's truly authentic ask yourself as many why questions as you possibly can and then struggle to answer them you may fail but the struggle is what counts the struggle is what will give the scene depth and layers and subtext the why creates the subtext so in closing what is acting why? I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel. And remember, if you want to join a bunch of your fellow actors who are serious and dedicated and will motivate you to keep doing the work, please visit actorsfeedbackforum.com. Link in the description. See you next video.